Welcome to our daily read, daily reading. I said I was going to start doing. Uh, today is August 31st, and the daily reading for today is going to be Psalms chapters 132 through 134 and 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 17 through 34. At the top, it refers to Psalm 142, verse 3, where King David had written, When my spirit grows faint within me, it is you who watch over my way. And the story that is talking about us is an unknown route or route, depending on what part of the country you're from. Perhaps I shouldn't have agreed to join Brian on a run. I was in a foreign country and I had no idea where or how far we would go or what the terrain would be like. Plus, he was a fast runner. Would I twist an ankle trying to keep up with them? What could I do but trust Brian because he knew the way? As we started, I got even more worried. The trail was rough, winding through a thick forest on uneven ground. Thankfully, Brian kept turning around to check on me and warn me of rough patches ahead. Perhaps this was how some of the people in Bible times felt while entertaining unfamiliar territory, Abraham and Canaan, the Israelites in the wilderness, and Jesus' disciples on their mission to share the good news. They had no clue what the journey would be like, except that it would surely be tough. But they had someone leading them who knew the way ahead. They had to trust that God would give them the strength to cope and that he would take care of them. They could follow him because he knew exactly what lay ahead. This assurance comforted David when he was on the run. Despite great uncertainty, he said to God, when my spirit grows faint within me, it is you who watch over my way. Psalm 142.3 I will, there will be times in life when we fear what lies ahead, but we know this, our God who walks with us knows the way. What worries you most in life? How can you remind yourself that God is walking with you and knows the way ahead? Father, even though I don't know what may happen next, you do. And we know that you'll take care of us and guide our steps. Father, we just ask that you bless the reading of your word today, Father. Help it to get down on the inside of us and, and grow. Lord, give us the discernment and the understanding of your word and let it speak to our hearts. Give us the understanding and the wisdom of what you're saying in your word, Father, so that we can go then and share it with others that need to know your son and need to understand how much you love us and what precious gifts you gave us, Lord, for eternal life through Jesus. And we pray this in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to start with Psalm 132. I'm reading out the New King James Version. The author is David. Worship and blessings with the return of the ark is what my Bible shows this chapter to be titled. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, how he swore unto the Lord and vowed unto the mighty work of Jacob. Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go up into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find out a place for the Lord as habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Lo, we heard of it at Ephrata. We found it in the fields of the wood. We will go into his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into your rest, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness and let your saints shout for joy. For your servant David's sake, turn not away the face of your anointed. The Lord has sworn in truth unto David, he will not turn from it. Of the fruit of your body will I set upon your throne. 
if your children will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them, their children shall also sit upon your throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his habitation. This is my rest forever. Here will I dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There will I make the horn of David to bud. I have ordained a lamp for my anointed. His enemies will I clothe with shame, but upon himself shall his crown flourish. Psalm 133, the author is still David, the joy of brotherhood and harmony. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious anointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessings, even life forevermore. Psalm 134. David is probably the author, an exhortation to praise. Behold, bless you the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth bless you out of Zion. Okay, let's go ahead and turn over then to 1 Corinthians. And that'll be our final reading for today. It's chapter 11, verses 17 through 34. chapter 11 <laughs> I was looking for chapter 17 I was wondering why I couldn't find it starting at verse 17 and this now in this that I declare unto you I praise you not that you come together not for the better but for the worse there be divisions among you and I partly believe it for there must be also heresies among you that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Chapter, verse 20, in this section is the Lord's Supper. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone takes before other his own supper, and one is hungry, and another is drunken. What? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise you, the church of God, and shame them? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered, in which he, has, he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, which he had supped, when he had supped, saying, This cup is... The New Testament in my blood, the new covenant. This do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me and drink this cup. You do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself at cup. For he who eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks damnation to himself. This cause are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. And I'm just going to interject here on the study Bible when it talks about they don't lose their souls, but they do cut their lives short. This shows us, I seriously thought is, for if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one, eat at home, that you come not together under unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Father, I thank you. For, for the word that you've given us. And may you add a blessing to the hearing and the reading of your word. And Lord, I just pray that these words that we've read has touched someone and that it speaks to their heart and leads them to continue reading on their own and that they, on their own, reach out to you and seek your face 
and, and talk to you, Lord, and establish a relationship if they don't already have one with you. That is only through him in Jesus. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you have a blessed day. We will see you tomorrow. And we will pick up in uh, September 1st reading, a Daily Bread, with the Psalms 135 and 136 and 1 Corinthians, all of chapter 12. Until then, shalom, and I hope you have a blessed evening.